You know, the Predator franchise in many ways mirrors the Alien and Terminator franchise in that the first two movies are relatively good. In fact, Predator 1 is a bona fide classic. But the sequels after the second one are very, very hit or miss. And they range from being average to downright mediocre. And don't even get me started on those AVP movies. But today I'm going to talk about the brand new film dropping on Hulu called Prey. This is supposed to be a prequel to the original Predator film. And uh, this movie's been talked about for a while. I finally see it. It's on Hulu right now as we speak. Uh, The movie's directed by Dan Trachtenberg. And uh, basically this movie, what it does is it goes and takes this Predator concept and goes back to basics. If you remember the original Predator movie, it was a team of military badasses going into the jungle and getting taken out one by one. This movie, however, goes back to a group of Native Americans who are uh, basically stuck in this... um, You know, they're basically stuck trying to survive from this Predator. Now, the story does center around one main character. I guess you can call it the Arnold Schwarzenegger of this movie, who's um, Nadu, played by Amber Midthunder. Now, I don't know anything about Amber Midthunder. I know nothing about this actress, but she's the main character here, and her whole thing is that she wants to to be respected as a hunter in her, um, you know, in in her clan or her tribe or whatever. Now, when it comes to the Predator, the Predator comes to Earth, and obviously this is a situation where it doesn't directly tie into the Arnold film, the first Predator film. It just talks about how, you know, this was an early example of a Predator coming to Earth. What this movie, I had some real issues with this film because it's getting a lot of praise right now all over the web, Rotten Tomatoes, which I don't really care about. And I gotta be honest, the movie is just okay. I don't think it was that good of a film, to be honest with you. The first half... They try to build up Naru, but it doesn't really work for me. And then the second half, when the Predator actually shows up and does stuff, that's when I started to get interested. Now, it has its obvious gore uh, elements that are existent in Predator films. We're seeing disembowelments and body parts getting ripped apart and decapitations as this tribe tries to battle it out against a creature that is significantly more technologically advanced. And so Nadu has to use her brain to try to stop this thing before it wipes out her entire tribe. So the character of Nadu just did not connect with me. It really did. She's pretty much the main character. You have also Dakota Beavers as Tabe, her brother, um, and uh, several other characters. But to me... These characters did not connect, especially compared to Predator 1 and 2. You got Carl Weathers, you got um, Danny Glover, you've got these super charismatic actors. These actors in this film just did not connect with me. And because of that, I found myself kind of drifting off mentally. Like It wasn't that exciting of a film. Yeah, there's a lot of violence, and I think the movie relies a little too much on its violence to make up for its lack of substance. I didn't notice any kind of actual, you know, story or anything like that when it comes to a message. Nadu pretty much has to get smart and use her tactical and her uh, knowledge of the jungle, for lack of a better term, to try to capture and or kill the predator. The movie does go back to basics, but in many ways, there are a few things that I had issues with. Number one, I mentioned the characters didn't really connect with them in this film. It just it just didn't work with me. Number two, uh, halfway through the film, it gets interesting when they actually reveal the Predator. But prior to that, I don't know, man, just the film was dragging along. You could have shaved some time off of this thing and made it better. Number three... Some of the CGI looks really bad. It looks like obvious CGI, unnatural movement. There are animals in this movie, legitimate, like, you know, woodland animals who do not look real. They don't look real in the slightest, and it's pretty obvious when you watch it. So whenever you do a movie that has less practical effects, more CG, and I know the whole business is turning into this, it really does, in some cases, it really does look very fake. It just, the animals were not moving You know, the animation, the computer-generated animation just did not look realistic enough. Also, I feel like the Predator in this film was a bit weaker. You know, Naru didn't really struggle as much as I felt she should have. She witnessed some atrocities as she's trying to survive the Predator, but 
she didn't really, she did not really, you know, she didn't really like struggle as much as you would think. Now, there is an Easter egg in this film that does tie into Predator 2 near the end of the movie, and that was sort of prequelitis. Whenever a prequel tries to, uh, you know, make everything fit in the same universe, they have to have some kind of artifact or some kind of character that connects with the other characters of the original film series, and there certainly is that here. Also, there is somewhat of an end credit scene. They have a like an animated credit scene, and um, it, it, I mean, I'll just tell you kind of what you see. It's not really a spoiler, but you see multiple predator ships coming towards Earth in that little animation. So that's implying that there are more predators coming. So perhaps the predator in this film is just not. Um, he he's he's. He's like maybe the first one. You can tell because the technology he uses does seem less advanced than the ones we saw in the older Predator films. I know that the movie The Predator gets a lot of shit that came out in 2018. I enjoyed it, but to be honest with you, I had no urge to watch it again. And this movie's kind of similar to that. You know, I had a good time with some of the scenes. I had a good time with some of the aspects of it, but... It's just not a movie I want to see. So if you're a fan of The Predator, you'll probably see this movie. You probably should see it. Um, if you're not a fan of The Predator, you can probably skip it. To me, the only Predator films that I feel, in my opinion, are really like replayable. Predator 1, which is a classic. It's a masterpiece. Predator 2 and Predators with Robert Rodriguez. That one wasn't as good as the first two, but it was still... You know, it, it kept the pace moving strongly. This movie just drags a lot and about 30 minutes in you're like thinking to yourself okay where is this going like they sort of you know spent too much time with Nadu trying to prove she's a hunter with other animals and obviously the predator is the one she hunted but I think they spent too much time that could have been shortened very much it could have been um maybe made into a, into a like a video package or a, a montage or something it just really dragged, and it kind of reminded me of that movie, The Gray, where I went to go see this film in theaters, The Gray, and it got a lot of critical acclaim, but I just didn't, it didn't connect with me, and I'm not one of those guys that has to have, like, thrilling action nonstop, but just the characters, even though it was Liam Neeson, just did not connect with me, same thing in this movie. I will also say that this movie is very dialogue light. There is not a lot of talking in this film at all. It's a relatively quiet film. Uh, there's some dialogue, don't get me wrong, but really Dan Trachtenberg put that aside for visuals, which is great. I mean, it kind of has that silent film vibe. I know there's a section of the old Predator movie, the original one, that's like that. This movie went for that. But it just felt like it was there for too long. Just my opinion. Again, not really a movie I would say is worth going out of your way to see unless you are a Predator fan. And if you're not a Predator fan, then you should probably watch the original Predator film from back in uh, in the 80s, late 80s. So that way you can find a really good movie. So that's my thoughts on The Prey. Talk to you soon.